Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marentet, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor Essex County Health Unit. Thank you for your questions and feedback. I want to speak a bit about the numbers we provide every day. The Health Unit receives test results directly from the lab. These results are provided to us in batches throughout the day and overnight. You are receiving the most current numbers of cases as of 8 a.m. that morning, this morning. Due to the tight timelines, we don't always have the complete demographic information such as gender, and so the percentages don't always match up during this live broadcast. So going forward, and in response to your questions, we will be revamping our webpage to include resolved cases, gender, deceased, healthcare worker status, and in addition, we will have more information about outbreaks in long-term care and retirement homes. In the event we don't have the complete information for you, we will re report this as unknown until all information is obtained. I will now share our daily updates. We now have 16,667 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 4,347 cases in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 16 cases and Sarnia-Lampton has reported 80 cases. Michigan now has 17,221 cases with 5,023 cases in Detroit. We now have 227 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Windsor-Essex. 26% of our cases are between 50 and 59 years of age. 41% are male, 57% are female, and 2% are unknown at this time. We are currently working with seven long-term care and retirement homes that are experiencing COVID-19 outbreaks. The health unit continues to follow up directly with everyone who has tested for COVID-19, both positive and negative results. Those that are awaiting results are to remain in self-isolation. Overall, 1,671 individuals have been tested for COVID-19 and of those tested, 195 tests are pending. Testing for COVID-19 should be based on clinical assessment. Where there are shortages of testing kits, then the following groups are prioritized. Symptomatic healthcare workers and staff who work in healthcare facilities, symptomatic residents and staff in long-term care facilities and retirement homes, hospitalized patients admitted with respiratory symptoms, symptomatic members of remote, isolated, rural, and indigenous communities, and symptomatic travelers identified at a point of entry to Canada. Please continue to visit wechu.org for the most current information and case counts. Many of our frequently asked questions are posted on our website. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, please complete the online self-assessment tool available at ontario.ca or contact Telehealth Ontario or call your primary care provider for a phone assessment or a virtual assessment if that's available. They will guide you for next steps including contacting public health or attending an assessment centre. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning everyone. Um, identifying outbreaks in long-term care and retirement homes and implementing response is a standard practice and requirement under the Health Promotion and Protection Act. Outbreaks occur every year throughout the year in long-term care facilities and are most commonly associated with respiratory infection or enteric infections. Public health units are responsible for working with long-term care facilities to educate staff on infectious diseases develop policies and protocols for outbreak management, ongoing monitoring, and consultation, and management of outbreaks and outbreak investigations. Public health units are also required to report outbreaks to the ministry through the Integrated Public Health Information System, or IFIS, and to the public through a public disclosure system. Currently, the ministry requires an outbreak to be declared in long-term care or retirement home when any one person, uh, either a staff or a resident, is confirmed positive for COVID-19. This 
leads for a number of actions and quick implementation of outbreak management practices to manage potential spread of the disease to other. The Windsor Essex County Health Unit staff are, is regularly in contact with all long-term care facilities through our public health inspectors to provide guidance, education, and support. Last week, the Windsor Essex County Health Unit also launched an online learning for long-term care homes related to COVID-19, proper use of personal protective equipment, cleaning and disinfection of all their uh, facilities and equipment. <clears throat> Every outbreak reported to the Windsor Essex County Health Unit is followed by immediate contact with our public health inspectors to go over their outbreak management protocol and practices. All recommendations are to support the protection and safety of residents and staff and ensure continued operation of the facility. Managing these outbreaks is a priority for the Windsor Essex County Health Unit. Our staff are working closely with these homes to ensure that appropriate measures are in place to control the outbreak in these facilities. The facilities that are currently in outbreak for COVID-19, uh, we have reached out to uh, each of these in, uh, facilities directly, um, myself as well as uh, Teresa Merentet and our health protection director, to make sure that they have all the, the, the support that they can get from the health unit in managing and controlling these outbreak. These outbreaks are a priority in these long-term care homes, and we will continue to work with these uh, facilities to ensure a swift action is, uh, is taken place, and we are able to manage and control these outbreaks in a timely manner. Thank you. Um, so I would, uh, we would be uploading all those details on our website, uh, and I don't want to uh, give you any name which uh, can confuse people. So all those information will be updated on our website. Please uh, go and visit our website for all those details. So yesterday, uh, on the subject of surgical um, dental masks, uh, I'm sorry, not to homemade masks, you were saying that the, you, you do not personally recommend them. But uh, Dr. Teresa Tam, the, the Kansas public health official, uh, changed her position and, and is saying that it could be sensible to wear the mask. Uh, does the Blue Jack and now have a different position on the mask? So I think our position has, uh, has been the same because we feel that uh, it does give people a false sense of security, but I'm not stopping anyone to wear the mask in the first place. So we gave some, uh, uh, some instructions on people if they are considering to use the homemade mask, they, they need to take the following steps to make sure that they're using it correctly uh, to get the benefit that they're looking to get. And most importantly, they're disposing it off in a proper way. What we have seen in, in various places and even uh, some of the residents' concerns and complaints is these masks and these gloves are discarded uh, right out in the public, and that puts everyone at risk. So if people who are who wants to use this mask, they had first of all, they need to make sure that they're using it properly, and secondly, they're disposing it off properly. For everyone, if they're using, uh, if they're considering to use the homemade mask, they need to take the following steps before putting on a mask. Please wash your hands with soap and water thoroughly. Secure the elastic loops around your ears. Ensure the mask completely covers your nose and mouth and there are no gaps. And most importantly, do not touch the mask while wearing it and remove by the plastic loops or ties. That is one of the reasons that we feel that people can actually contaminate the mask and put them at, at more risk of uh, contracting uh, COVID uh, rather than uh, using the mask to prevent it. They also need to wash their hands thoroughly and throw away in a secure and proper way or wash in a wash, uh, washing machine if reusable. The most important measure still is you should stay home as much as possible. Ensure physical distancing from others. That is the most critical piece. Even if you're wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, the difference between how close you are to another person, that would, that would determine your likelihood of contracting the disease. Uh, and uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, even when you're wearing the mask, do not touch your face, nose, mouth, or eyes before washing hands, and do not um, um, uh, contribute to spreading the contaminated or you discard the mask or gloves uh, in public. Any 
questions from CDC? Uh, yes, I see the healthcare worker status now on uh, the healthcare worker website. Uh, I uh, there's 75 or 73 other investigations, but it doesn't break down um, how serious those cases are. Do we know if any of those healthcare workers are hospitalized? So we are reporting what the information we have, and uh, we will continue to report that. Most of these uh, people, there are some people who are in the hospitals, and the majority of them are uh, um, self-isolating and recovering well uh, in their home. Most of the healthcare workers are recovering well in their homes, to, to the best of our knowledge. Okay, and I think the hospitalized number is 15 ICUs, three, but there's still about 50 under investigation. Is that to say the hospitals are still not seeing a large number they expected to see patients with COVID-19? Well, in theory, uh, people should be, if uh, at, at the right time, if they're appropriately screened and assessed. Uh, most of these cases we should be able to pick up early. Now, we are, we, what we are seeing more cases in the most vulnerable population, that is uh, people who are living in long-term care homes and retirement home. So that's where we are seeing some of those cases. The hospitals, obviously, if someone is showing up with any symptoms that are severe enough to qualify for a COVID testing, so they are doing that. And I think that's purely based on the clinical assessment. And uh, we hope that um, you know the number of people who end up needing a hospital bed or an ICU bed should be uh, uh, very manageable to our community. Any questions, <laughs> any questions from Annie Hunter? Yes, the uh, outbreak at the long-term care home, is that in a staff number or in a resident? So we'll put that breakdown um, in our, on our website along with uh, some of those details. Um, I think it would be much easier to follow it from that table. It's okay. it's We're seeing, roughly speaking, an, an, an average of 20 to 30 new uh, positive cases per day. I remember when this was a huge in, in Italy, Cases were doubling every few days. So, are we below what the average is in terms of that surge, or are we on par with what is expected? So, we presented our epi summary uh, last Friday where we touched on that case doubling rate. So, one of the slides did talk about our case doubling rate. At that time, it was two, uh, our case doubling rate was uh, two every day. Um, seeing case consistently between 20 and 30, obviously that means that we're not doubling at the rate that we should be, but it's still it's too early to say that. I would just use this very cautiously and we will update it, uh, not this Friday, but Thursday, because Friday we, will be, uh, we won't be doing the live session. So Thursday we will provide uh, another epi summary uh, to give a, an update to the community of what it looks like in terms of the data that we have, and we will touch on that case doubling uh, rate as well in our community. Any questions from Blackford? Uh, I think you just answered those for me. I was going to ask about uh, the recent tests that have been coming back, but I guess we will wait for those today. Any questions from Windsor? I just got a clarification on the number of cases we covered yesterday. Uh, in, in the brief statement, it said 15 total cases have recovered, but the healthiness one site is now saying 13. So we are, whatever we are updating on our website, that will be uh, taken as more accurate and it also depends on some of the follow-up uh, to ensure that we are reporting it accurately. Most of the information that we are trying to provide to the public is, is we are trying our best to provide that timely information, uh, but our focus is obviously more on the case and contact management and at times when we are getting that data, some of that data is not available but uh, what we are putting on our website is the most accurate information uh, to the time when it was posted. Any questions from CPD? So just to clarify, so you're going from 16 to 13, so that, that number is more of an accurate number of what happened, what's happening right now, uh, and the 16 would have been what? 16 people who are recovered. Uh... Oh, no, I was just wondering, like, we went from 16 to 13, so how do we go from 16 to 13? There's some double counting happening. Oh, okay. All right, I get that. Uh, just to clarify, to the, uh, the two deaths, uh, were they long-term care related? 
So we had uh, one female in the seven, in her 70s uh, that was not a long-term care resident. She was from the community, got sick, and admitted to the hospital where she passed away. Um, and the other person was uh, an individual in um, uh, in uh, his 80s. Uh, that he he passed away in a long-term care home. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.